Hello and welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT and we're in Fandelva and below the Shattered Obelisk. And we are continuing to build out Wave Echo Cave in this video. So we've got a lot of it here. Um, only a few more to go. I think it's about six locations to go. Uh, so let's crack on, shall we? Um, so where did we get to? We completed Area 12 up here with all of these undead and that flame skull. So we're now on to Area 13. Uh, which is the Starry Cavern. I'm going to make sure that this is a map location, of course. Area 13. And we can save that just so that you know which one we're talking about. We talk about this one uh, just here. So this main cavern here. All right, so what the hell is happening in the Starry Cavern? So we've got some uh, nice big chunky bit of description for a change, which is quite nice. And then uh, a few other bits in here. Oops, a daisy. Let's do it like that. All right, so glittering minerals in the ceiling of this large cavern cast any light that reflect and reflects it back to create the impression of a starry night sky. Dozens of skeletons, many crushed under the fall of debris, scattered across the floor. Oh, guess what? We're going to be using our skeletons again. And again, remember, this is not because they are necessarily combatants. It's more about making sure our players are kept on their toes. <laughs> and uh, not sure what's happening. So we can scatter a whole few in here. All right, so the cave is large enough to contain two freestanding structures. Now that's this one here. Ooh, and this one here. Um, that would suggest that actually some of these skellies uh, would also be scattered around these areas up here as well. So let's just throw a few around because we can. Lovely jubbly. Um, each of these stone rooms is proportioned for human use as opposed to dwarf sized doorways and furnishings elsewhere in the mines. Both structures have battered and blackened masonry walls. Their double doors cracked and scorched. So there'll be these double doors here and these double doors here. Um, the cavern is divided by an escarpment into which flight of stairs has been cut. Passages lead to the north, south and west. And of course, we don't need to read out the fact that there's passages to the north, south and west because they can see it on the map, which is good. Uh, the structural damage uh, and skeletal remains in this area, evidence of the destructive spell battle fought here centuries ago when the bandits and their mercenary wizards stormed the mines. The damaged rooms uh, described are areas 14 and 15, so yep, that one and that one. Uh, the skeletons are inanimate and pose no danger. The minerals in the ceiling are pretty, but are neither magic nor valuable. Uh, any character proficient in arcana can sense a subtle magic aura, sorry, a subtle aura of magic in this cavern. Uh, a detect magic spill spell reveals the same. The aura becomes stronger as they approach area 15. Well, that was exciting, wasn't it? Uh, it's pretty much an empty cavern. All right. Thank you very much. Not a lot going on in there at this point. Of course, we can always add stuff. Uh, next one. This is going to be area 14, which is the wizard's quarters wizards quarters <laughs> area 14 there we go and that's this one down here i believe yes it is good all right so what's so special about the wizards quarters is actually something happening here which is good so the double door leading to this area is cracked so that's this again this door here uh, hinges are partially melted. Wrenching or smashing open the door requires a skill ability equals strength. Skill equal, equals athletics. DC 15. Check. Okay, so they can't even get into this room. It's just a... Make sure that came up okay. Yes, it did. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so they can't even get into this room initially. So, but once they do, we have, do have a room description. Let's pop that in as well. Lovely. And then we've got a fair bit of stuff going on in it's something actually happening in here, which is nice. All right, so dust, ash, walls blackened by fire and heaps of debris beneath the sagging ceiling show that this room was damaged by a destructive blast. The furnishings, table, chairs, bookshelves, beds are charred or splintered. Uh, a scorched iron chest stands near the foot of one of the beds and the adjacent, uh, the adjacent closet to the south wall is full of rubble. So that's this is full of rubble down here. OK, but we have got a chest. Um, should we chuck that in now? Uh, no, let's not. What's in the chest? Uh, this room contains the restless spirit of a wizard, Mormesk, the Wraith. So we need a Wraith. I don't think we've had a Wraith yet. Undead. No, we haven't. That's right. SRD. Thank you very much. Nice and easy. Uh, <laughs> Monsters, come on. There's a Wraith. Oop going to chuck it over here into our undead folder uh, and then we can chuck this out here now we actually have an image for uh, um, what's his name Mormesk so I am just in the other window doing my my thing where I am downloading that and talking slowly because I can't do two things at once please bear with me uh, so now we should be able to upload this or rather update this picture to be the one that we want of this character. Now this is a character in theory they're actually going to talk to um, and converse with rather than just beat the living cack out of. So uh, I think it's good for us to do that. Uh, got rid of the wrong one. Bring that in. Add a frame. We're using that. That'll do nicely. Thank you very much. Uh, and there we go. Uh, what I do want to do is I'm going to update this name. More, more mesk, was it? Um, M O R M E S K. Yeah. Okay, brilliant. So we've got more mesk the wraith in here. Uh, we can where it says wraith here. We can just drop that in. In case we want a quick link to it. Mormesk was a powerful mage until he met his end in the spell battle at the climax of the bandit attack. Centuries of anger have poisoned his soul, transforming him into a hate-filled apparition. Uh, Mormesk leads the undead that haunt the Wave Echo Cave, so the zombies and skeletons that actually have been reanimated all belong to him. The Wraith spends his time here because the treasure he has amassed in life lies in the scorched chest, no longer corporeal, he cannot touch or possess the wealth he enjoyed in life. This room served as a guest house for visiting wizards working in the on the Forge of Spells, which is Area 15. That's up here. Um, most of whom are human from nearby cities. Furnishings are all human size. Treasure. So. Um, scorch chest. We need to put that scorch chest in, don't we? Now, what's interesting is... Is it, oh yeah, they've given him a name. They've told you that he's in control of the undead. Um, but he's a bit flat. <laughs> yeah, they're just He's there to fight. That's it. And again, it's something I do find with, with this module. As, as much as I really like this module, there's certain bits of it where it's just flat and people are just there to be beaten up. Um, so we might do something about that. Uh, okay. Let's uh, create this treasure chest then. So what's in there? Money, 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 money. Malachites. Uh, wooden pipe adorned with platinum, platinum filigree. So if I go to my items uh, and I go to my loots and treasure, have I got malachites? Of course I don't have malachites. That would be, that would be useful, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, wooden pipes, though. We could... Oh, whoops. I'm going to look in the SRD and see if an items we've got. Uh, pipes, only magic ones. Um, probably not in there either. No. Okay, that's all right. What we can do is 
Um, let's just create a new item. I'm going to copy this across. Hang on, let me just shrink all this up a bit. Uh, get rid of the jewelry. Right, I'm going to copy across the pipes of haunting. I'm not giving them that. Uh, and because this is over here, I can update this and change it however I want. So one of the things I'm going to do is get rid of all of that. Uh, the description was wooden pipe. So pipe adorned with platinum. Filigree. Okay, so we got a, we got a picture there. We've got an item, uh, details, no activation cost. But get rid of all of that. It's not a trinket. This is going to be. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh, tumor not required. No saving throw. All of that lot. It's not magical. Effects none. Midi cure well none. Lovely, lovely. Okay, that's fine. Uh, That's all we need. Okay. Uh, so we've got. Oh, ooh, uh, hang on a minute. I <laughs> sorry. I don't want it to be. How do I? Ch oh, uncommon trinket. I kind of don't want it to be. It's. Hmm. I thought I could quite easily just change that. Okay. Doesn't matter. I don't care that much. It's fine. Uh, what I am going to do, though, is I'm going to drag that uh, down here. I'm going to create a new pile. So I'm putting it at the foot of this bed here. Double click. I'm going to go to configure this pile. Other settings. Uh, just to make sure. Yeah, other settings. And I'm going to make this a container, uh, which is closed. Uh, and what did it say it was? It was a uh, scorched chest. Um, okay. Let's find a image that we can use for that. Now, I think in the core data is where we might find it. I can't, um, is it? <laughs> Containers. Chests. Uh, to be honest, anything will do. It doesn't really matter. Reinforced steel brown chest. Let's go with that. Okay, there it is. Uh, and we've got our pipes here that they can sell later. We want to add some currency in here. How much do they say? 1,100 copper, 160 silver, 100 electrum, everybody's favorite, um, and five malachites uh, worth 10 gold each. Well, I might swap those out for something I've already got. How much were amethysts amethyst were worth? 50. Uh, agates, agates were worth 10. I'm going to chuck those in instead. Because you know what? It's my game. <laughs> and I can do that. All right. Good. Update the pile. Uh, leave. And we have this here. So they can absolutely attempt to take that if they want. Um, I need to update the name of this. And what was it? It was a scorched chest. Um, name display. I don't want to display the name anyway. There we go. So we can leave that there. And we can put more mesk in here as well. Yeah, so he's quite, uh, he's quite flat, isn't it? Isn't he? Hmm. Okay. We'll come back. If we feel that we need to, we will come back. Uh, and I kind of think we do. I, I, I would like him to potentially pose additional side quests. Maybe uh, he has an extra secret thing that he knows about that he would share if the characters agree. Because he's, he's basically dealing with... Um, blimey, why have I forgotten his name? The Black Spider. Um, he's basically dealing with Black Spider and his minions are invaded. So it might be that you can do a deal with this guy um, and 
he will reveal some additional treasure if you clear out all of the bugbears and everything else that have invaded um, and leave the place in peace. Well, I mean, obviously that's not the point of the adventure, but the player characters could choose to do his quest for him, find out that secret piece of information, um, go get that piece of treasure, and then come back and deal with him. They could do that. Of course they could. And then they've got the moral dilemma of uh, betraying somebody that they've done a deal with if they if they care. They may well not. All right. Onwards. Forge of Spells. I didn't want a class summary, did I? Muppetry. Uh, ooh. <laughs> I have to delete that and do it again, I think. I wasn't sure if you could change it. Um, sometimes it's just quicker just to redo it than it is to mess around trying to work out how you change one of your mistakes. I make so many. <laughs> Okay, we're now looking at this area up here. So this is the Forge of Spells room. Okay, so... A bit of copy and paste in again. Your favourite thing to watch. Got some actual description. Which is nice. We'll go through it again in a second. And then we've got, oh, I've just done something hideous. What did I do? That's all right. Uh, da, 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 da. Here we go. So it's a big one. Relative. Okay, so we start at the top here. Uh, the wizards who allied with the dwarves and gnomes of, Fan of the Fandelver pack channeled the latent magic of these caverns to enchant well-made dwarven arms and gnome gadgets. The northernmost door is scorched and cracked and its iron hinge is partly melted. Forcing it open requires a DC strength check. So if I go to my walls, they're talking about this door here. So what I want to do is to say, actually, this is locked. Okay, that's a locked door. Um, DC 15 strength. So let's pop that in here. Uh, that is a duh, duh, uh, we want a skill check ability equals strength skill equals athletics uh, DC 15 and I can get rid of the rest of that junk. Right. The door is just as damaged, but st the double door is just as damaged, but stands slightly ajar. Uh, so obviously they could go round into that one though. <laughs> but there we go. All right. So uh, this large workshop was badly damaged by the ancient spell battle that laid waste to the mine. Uh, work tables taking up two corners of the room are scorched and the plaster is burnt off the masonry walls. In the middle of the room, a stone pedestal holds a small brazier in which an eerie green flame dances and crackles so we've got crackling noise as well uh, the brazier and its pedestal appear to have been untouched by the forces that destroyed the area behind the brazier floats a creature right so let's first of all let's put in our, a light source here let's not make it too large we want this to be green don't know why i said it like that <laughs> we want it to be green uh, we do want to animate it. Now it says flickering. Um, put that intensity right up. Yeah, I want to put that intensity up at least a bit. Um, don't need to look at those. Um, are we happy with these ranges here? Let's change that bright to 5 and that to 10 or how about we just make it 10 should we just yeah I might leave it like that let's just have a, it bright uh, 5 and 5 oh 5 and 10 rather I think we're going to do that 
Now, the best way to find out if these how well this actually works is always to bring a wherever Haley went. Haley, where are you? That's Violet Fungus. Where did, what did I do with Haley? Oh, she's up here. Come on, Haley. Do you know what? I haven't got that drag thing on <laughs> to make that much quicker, have I? Oh, and she hasn't got any light source on. Come on. Up here. Right. Zoom in. How does that look? Are we happy with the intensity of that? I'm not. No, I'm not. I want it flickering more. Um, is there a different flickering we could use for it? Uh, start at the bottom. Torch. Would that be better? I think that is better, actually. And we want to add a sound on for this as well. Uh, now, we've used this one before. I'm just going to use, if I can find where I put it. Uh, da, 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 no, 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 no. Um, I think it was when we were doing um, Stormwreck Isle, even though it says Shipwreck Isle. I'm going to use my Crackling Campfire. Um, I'm going to put the volume up a bit, but I'm going to have the effect radius quite small. Volume easing, no. I'm going to do that. Let's check. Yep, I like that. That's fine. If they go right up to it, they can hear that intense crackling noise, which is good. Okay, so whew, perhaps more dominant in this area. So behind the brazier of green flames floats a spherical creature measuring roughly four feet in diameter, four eye stalks protruding from its central mass. Two on each side in the center of its body is a large eye that stares at you. So the spherical monster. Uh, in this room is a spectator, so we need a spectator. I definitely haven't used one of those before, or well, not in here anyway. Uh, spectator. Oh, we don't have a spectator in here. How interesting. Um, that's not a problem though, is it? Because we know what we can do about that. If we go to our actors, uh, let's just close some of these up. At the bottom here, we've got our import stat block. This is such a useful little mod. Um, apologies, I can't remember who actually um, was the one who, who told me about it, but it's really useful. Uh, okay, I'm just on the other screen, I'm just opening up that stat block so I can see it. Uh, and now I'm doing the copy paste thing. And now I'm pasting it. Okay. Uh, it needs to go into, it's an aberration, isn't it? There we go import it into there. I'm also going to need an image, so bear with me. You can hear me clicking away in the background as I prepare a spectator. Okay, and then we can bring that over. Let's get rid of those backgrounds. Apply. Okay, so uh, as always, just double check our monsters brought everything in that we should have. Uh, armor class 14, 39 hit points, fly speed of 30, but no ground movement. That's fine. 8, 14, 14, 13, 14, 11 for the stats down here, which are all good. We've got perception. Uh, yep, that's good. Immune to prone. That's good. So just here on the character sheet. Um, we've got a whole bunch of languages. Deep, uh, deep speech telepathy that's come through okay we've got dark vision which is good should be challenge rating three at the top right that's good all of that looks lovely now under features we should have bite attack we have and then we've got the eye rays now my question is going to be do you know what there's, there's a way to find out isn't there bear with me let me finish just checking this first <laughs> so biography effects none spell book none features so we should have spell reflection we should have create food and water wounding ray fear ray paralyzing ray confusion ray um and then it's got eye rays oh, i see yeah yeah that's not actually going to do anything is it because that's just like a subheading that's fine we can leave that in though 
let's find him. Uh, you're not a merchant. <laughs> let's jump him out here. Okay, there he is. Now, what we can do, of course, is select him, target Haley, and then we can try a couple of these uh, attacks just to make sure that they work all right. So let's just make sure the bite works. Oops, have to click the dice. Good, it's saying he can't because he's too far away. We wouldn't want that. There goes the bite. Attempt to bite Haley. Ouch. Uh, no. And successfully manages to do that. So bite works, which is great. Let's move him away again. Um, confusion ray. Oop, I keep clicking on the thing rather than the button. Brilliant. So it's So it has picked up the fact that she needs to make that saving throw. Paralyzing ray. Ouch. <laughs> uh, the fear ray. She made that one. The wounding ray. And, <laughs> and she's been put on the floor. <laughs> Good. Right, so those are working. Sorry, Haley. <laughs> Poor Haley. She's getting them for a rough ride. All right, so we've got all of those. They all work fine, which is good. Um, so we've got him over here. Right, so let's just clear that chat. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of that. All right, so the Feralca Monster. Duh, 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 duh. He's been, he was slated to serve for 101 years when the mine was sacked. The bandits disturbed the delicate magic in the area, eroding the spectator's grip on reality. It believes the mine is still in use, ignoring all evidence to the contrary. The Wraith... So, so uh, Momesk uh, wants to eliminate the spectator. Oh, look, you know, there is a quest for Momesk. Uh, but so far, the creature has easily handled the assaults of Momesk's zombies and ghouls while seeing nothing strange about undead roaming the mine. With a successful... Got a skill check. Uh, skill check... Ability equals Riz. Yeah, I said Riz. Sharp. <laughs> Deception 15. I'm far too old to be saying things like Riz. <laughs> um, so with an a Prisma um, Deception check, a character can convince the spectator that one or more party members are wizards or dwarves who work for the owners of Wayrecker Cave, sent to terminate the spectator's employment, thereby releasing him from ob his obligation. If the deception succeeds, the spectator disappears and returns to his home dimension. Isn't that nice? If the party attempt to remove anything from this area, he attacks. That's fair enough. Can't argue with that, can you? That's his job. Uh, now, what's interesting is it mentions the fact that old Mesk wants him removed, but nothing in Momesk's area down here, nothing in here says that he wants it removed. Um, that's a quest right there, a little side quest. What is he going to give them if they remove the beholder? Uh, sorry, the spectator, not beholder. Jesus. <laughs> remove the spectator. What's he going to give them? Um, well, in my game, he's definitely going to be offering that opportunity of doing that um, and he's going to offer them some kind of reward maybe a secret maybe a piece of information maybe he will deceive them I mean he's more than likely going to end up destroyed but so will the beholder all right so this brazier of green flame on a successful DC let's do this so we want a skill check ability intelligence for the skill whoops arcana dc 15 identifies the brazier as the source of the magic that suffuses the surrounding caverns this magic has waned over the years and can no longer be harnessed to permanently enchant magic items however any non-magical weapon or suit of armor bathed in the green flame for at least one minute becomes a plus one weapon or a suit of armor plus one respectively for d12 hours now i don't like that 
I don't like the temporary nature of it. So I always change this. Um, I'm going to change it to say uh, something along the lines of the forge can only empower items um, four times before becoming too drained. Um, true Daned and will require quill and will require a month to uh, recharge now that doesn't mean it always will work like that it means at the moment until the wizards get in there and do their things what it means is each member of the party can in theory because there's four charges each member of the party if you've got a party of four can choose to put one thing each in there now of course they won't know that there's only four charges guarantee somebody's going to go oh look i've charged my dagger i think i'll charge my other dagger and now i'll charge my left sock uh, and now i'll charge my right sock and now i'll charge your oh it doesn't work anymore <laughs> and chaos assume, ensues amongst the party because i don't know the rogue has enchanted all of his socks and not actually anything useful because uh, they weren't expecting it to run out now, a sensible player should figure the DM is not going to give them unlimited enchantments like that. Um, but there we go. All right, so that's how I prefer to do that rather than the temporary nature. There aren't a huge amount of magic weapons and stuff through here. It's one of those rare occasions where the characters actually get to choose what magic item they get um, once they work out, if they work out, that we can do that. All right. Removing the brazier from the Forger spells douses the green flame and forever deprives the brazier of its magical power. In other words, don't touch it. The Northern Room. So this is the one that's got those doors that are really stuck. This room was a separate workspace where items being prepared for enchantment were polished, painted, lacquered and otherwise finished. Like the main workshop, it's heavily damaged. In the tr There's treasure in there though. On the work table in the southeast corner of the room are items the spectator has charged. Oh, oh I see, that's the northern room, but the treasure is not anything to do with the northern room. Uh, on the work table in the southeast, so this one here, uh, are items. So there is, oh, he was charged to protect. So there's already some stuff here. And again, I do not have a problem with giving my characters, my players, a little bit of loot. Um, let's go to the SRD. Let's go to items. So what's it saying? We've got a mace. <laughs> so there's a mace plus one. Let's dump that down there. I'm going to create a new item pile. I'll deal with the item pile in a moment. Uh, and a breastplate plus one. I mean, that's pretty stunning in its own right. Uh, these magic items can have additional properties that are described below the mace. Oh, okay, so they want to potentially give us a specific item. So this is known as Lightbringer. It was made for the cleric Lathander, the god of dawn. The head of the mace is shaped like a sunburst and is made of solid brass. The mace glows as bright as a torch when its wielder commands. While glowing, the mace deals an extra 1d6 radiant damage to undead creatures. Ooh, okay. Um... And then we have a breastplate. This breastplate has a gold dragon motif worked into its design, created for a human hero of Neverwinter named Turgon. It grants the wearer advantage on saving throws against the breath weapon of dragons. Now, considering we are doing a tie-in with the uh, Dragon's Vice Spire, um, that's probably really, really handy, isn't it? Um, and potentially a um, a tie-in with uh, Stormwreck Isle as well, where they will meet dragons. So that's really, really useful. But can I, can I create those items? Right, let me take Breastplate plus one and dump it over here. Let me open this, because we might need a macro for this. This might not be a straightforward. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to edit this description. 
so that we've got that okay um the details of it it's medium armor breastplate blah 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 blah. magical yes it is um it's got its normal armor class magical bonus blah 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 blah, blah required strength activation cost right um so i wonder how this is going to work because i've not done this before i mean kind of it's a passive effect isn't it um oof. i might have to look at this and work out how to do this rather than bore you guys by you watching me struggle <laughs> i think my whole channel has been built on you guys watching me struggle so maybe you maybe you want to watch that um so effective disabled if actor incapacitated no transfer to actor on item equip uh, apply to self. Uh, da, 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 da. I might not be looking in the right place here. Duration. Well, it's it's on all the time. The effect it has. So this is where we need things like the the key attributes, um, uh, and where we look at the flags and stuff like that. And this might be where I just don't know what I'm doing. Uh, guarantee someone does out there. The thing is. Are they going to know? Yeah, I think that might be quite complicated, actually, because you kind of need to identify that the attack that's happening is Dragon's Breath. It to recognize that and then automatically apply um, that advantage. I'm not sure. I'm not sure that is going to be particularly easy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this to um, so the Breathplate of the Gold Dragon motif. Turgon's uh, breastplate. And we've got in the description what it does. Grants to wear advantage on saving throws. So I'm, I'm going to leave it at that. So I'm going to stick that in that pile and I'm going to get rid of that one. No, go and update it. Get rid of that one. No, it will eliminate, I'm sure. Um, I want to configure this pile to be, yeah, just an item pile, don't I? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, and I do want it to delete when empty, so that's good. Yeah, happy with that. Uh, let's just close that, open that again. Can I not get rid of that, please? There we go. <laughs> just didn't want to do it before. All right. So uh, we've done that. Now, what about the mace? It is, so again, I want to, it's a mace plus one. I want to drag it over here. So now I've got my copy of mace plus one that I can now edit. And we're going to call this mace of, uh, I can never spell, oh, Lightbringer. Blimey. My inability to use a keyboard, eh? Uh, Lightbringer. Okay, so it's a mace. I can see it's a mace. Um, copy that lot. I'm going to edit this description so that, again, it's easy for the player to read it. Uh, what is special about it? Da, 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 da. Glows as bright as a torch when the wielder commands. So effectively, it provides light. So that's interesting. Um, hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Uh, <laughs> there will be a way. I know there's a way. I know one thing I do want to do, though. If it's going to be doing D6 to Radiant to undead creatures, we can use build a bonus. Okay, so one of the things we can do, build a bonus, we can say for Lightbringer, uh, the filters are, uh, da, 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 is it target we want? Target creature type. Uh, undead. Oh, include. Now before I had this issue, where I, somebody else didn't, which was weird. Uh, I had to capitalize. 
So having lowercase and uppercase will solve any problems there could be. Right, so damage roll bonus. We are going to be doing 1d6 extra damage radiant. Now it does say that when you've got it activated with the light, then it does the extra damage. Um, and those two things are tied into each other. Not sure I care that much about it, to be honest. So uh, 1d6 damage if target is undead. That should be it. That's what we need. Now, how do we do the light thing? Uh, I know how we can probably find out. Let's have a look at a item that we know does light, that we can use for light. <laughs> hey Lee, hasn't got one. Uh, she's got the light spell. Of course she doesn't have a torch or anything. That's fine. Um, let's find a torch. Let's dump it in Haley's bag. Because that's effectively what we want to do, isn't it? So I didn't want to attack with it. No, I didn't want to attack Haley with it. <laughs> Such an idiot. Right click, edit. Okay. So this might not have, uh, it's got properties, 40 foot radius. So bear with me, I know, I'm, I know this is really painful, really painful for you guys, but I'm just trying to work this thing through. Um, it's a AOE targets, etc. Effects, no. Consumable, it's a trinket, not attuned. Prompt template. Yeah. Not seeing quite what I was hoping to see with regard to the light effect that it can bring. Um, Haley's got multiple torches on now. Where's your effects, Haley? Can you can you stop it? Thank you. Um, hmm. I'll have to look that one up. I keep saying it. I'll have to look it up and then I go and play with it and try and solve it myself. Um, but all, I, all we want is that effectively that they can use it to cast light. So really what I want is, um, is that when Haley's got this in her inventory, a bit like with a torch, I would really like it to show up as one of the, her options here. So she's got the light spell. Uh, can I just put light spell on it? Is that all I need to do? <sighs> I don't know. I'll, I'll have a play and I'll get back to you in the next video because we're, uh, we're chugging on here. All right. So breastplate, mace, we've done. Um, we've nearly done. Let's close that, save that, get rid of that. Go back to our items. Uh, this is Lightbringer. We've created Lightbringer, even if it's not quite right yet. And we can get rid of that other item. Just close that. Come off of Haley. There we go. So this is our pile of stuff. And actually, what we what we could do if we wanted to is dump Lightbringer as a separate item and dump that as a separate item as well. There we go. Uh, just double click this and say, no, don't display. Oops. Uh, don't display the name. And then they can just go and rummage around on those things and find them themselves. Uh, we could make the uh, icon a bit smaller. I know, I'm just playing again, aren't I? Uh, scale it down a bit. Um, that looks a bit, a bit nicer. All right. So that's area 15 done. Uh, we probably need to do a little bit of work around Malensk and or Mamensk rather, uh, and his conversation potentially around dealing with the be uh, with not the beholder, 
with the spectator. Uh, I think that makes quite a lot of sense, doesn't it? Um, yeah, that's good. All right, so what we've got left to do uh, on this one then, we have uh, the booming cavern to do, the old stream bed, which is this area. We've got the collapsed cavern. Oh, that's this bit. So we've got this bit to do, we've got this bit to do. Uh, we've got these couple of rooms up here to do, priest quarters, the temple, uh, and that's pretty much it. We're very, very nearly there, which is good. One more video, we should have those bits done. Um, I will have a play with Lightbringer and add that light source on. And in the beginning of the next video, I will tell you how... <laughs> I sound so confident that I'm going to be able to do this. Uh, I will tell you how I did it and show you that. Thanks for watching, guys. You take care. Bye-bye.